let's please move on to uh, item number three, public comments for items not on the agenda. Individuals are allowed three minutes. Is the council policy to refer matters raised in this form to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. So do we have any speakers um, that wanna speak on items that are not on the agenda this evening, please? We have one speaker, um, Paul, Paul Wapensky, just one moment. Hi, Paul, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. Uh, last meeting was brought up that we should have uh, city employees clean up after the homeless people's encampment. Is there a law against the homeless picking up after themselves or are they incapable? If they are, then they need, be, they need to be off our streets. Just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't clean up your trash. Why don't we drop a dumpster off and some cleaning supplies and let them dump their trash and clean up? Have someone from the city supervise it. I mean, explain to me why we should endanger city employees' health and waste their time. Why doesn't the city find an unoccupied building like the senior center or a school classroom, put up some cots for them to sleep in, and set up rules for cleanliness? Uh, letting people sleep on the streets is not humane or sanitary, and it's potentially dangerous for our taxpaying citizens who are already complained or fearful. Uh, last meeting, I was also, uh, I brought up. Uh, to the council to submit a proclamation in support of our police, fire, and emergency personnel and for the protection of the citizens and their property. And I don't see that on the agenda. I think the citizens will be reassured and calm and it might also shorten the long line at the gun shop that I see every day on El Camino. His business is booming. And I, as I support the Second Amendment, uh, but I would prefer our police to keep the peace. I was also brought up, uh, somebody brought up um, the idea of getting feedback for issues. Uh, from the council and I second that I think people get frustrated when we are able to talk but we, we get no feedback uh, to our comments or ideas and I would ask the city attorney if the Brown Act prohibits the council from having an open agenda or forum meeting a couple of times a year for this purpose uh, and I also think that the council should have a briefing for the citizens each meeting on our financial status and revenue outlook I think this is critical since we pay the bills uh, we're in a hole and our income prospects are not bright Google just announced that they're not going to have people come back to work until 2020, July of 2021. I mean, that's a huge hit for the city since YouTube employees will not be around uh, to spend their money here. Um, and the other question I have regarding that is, are they still committed to their campus plan now that uh, they aren't using it or, you know, their plans for the future? And lastly, uh, I'd ask, uh, why are the written comments that are submitted to the council for the meetings not read into the record. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have, um, it just says Tim, one moment while I bring you in. Hi, Tim, can you hear us? Actually, it's Raina. Oh. Hi, Raina. Hi. Whenever you're ready. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity to, to speak tonight. Um, I want to bring two items that I want to basically um, for the city manager or whoever he can appoint. Um, there is a lot of cigarettes, butts on the sidewalks from especially on the apartment buildings when i walk i've been picking up a lot and those on the streets uh that will be on taylor on chapman on mastic wherever you for the most part where there are um apartment buildings the smokers just go there and don't basically have the courtesy to put the cigarette butts in a container so i was wondering if the city can enforce that from landlords to basically keep an eye on that second issue is um 100 sullivan uh face it's an apartment building facing huntington the weeds are as tall as the building so is any way uh the city can contact the landlord and basically keep someone in charge um uh to keep that uh 
uh, yeah, that that area nice and clean. The the residents definitely deserve a better uh, um, area, nice and clean. So those are my two issues. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Raina. I would like to speak as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, wait, um, Melissa will let you know. And um, okay. Thank you. All right. Hi, Tim. Whenever you're ready. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, Thank you for letting me speak this evening. Um, just have a concern about the um, uh, Huntington Avenue between uh, Sylvan and San Felipe, and also down the San Antonio Road. Um, I know there's different jurisdictions, the city, Caltrain, BART, and I just would like to see some accountability on their part on keeping it clean, I know we just had some construction done, the sewers replaced, water lines replaced, and it's just leftover um, debris from that. There's a broken light post. I, I believe that belongs to Caltrain, and it's just left there. It's very a major eyesore, and it's ongoing. We Numerous uh, residents have reported it to San Bruno response, and it doesn't look like anything's been done. There's been no response. So I would just like to see that a maintenance, a regular maintenance um, cleaning schedule for that area, please. We've been asking it for a while now and it's an eyesore. And, it, and it's just, I think, I don't know what the challenge is for the city or for the other um, Caltrain and BART, but something needs to be done, please. The residents deserve a clean street. Thank you so much. Have Thank a good night. Okay, uh, next, I believe it's uh, Vaughn Gregory. Just one moment, Vaughn, while I bring you in. <clears throat> Hi, Vaughn, can you hear us? Hi, I can hear you. Okay, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Vaughn Gregory. I'm a resident on Green Avenue. I wanted to thank, um, thank the city council, the police department, city manager, and a huge thank you to Public Works for all your efforts last Thursday in cleaning up the garbage from the homeless encampment at Forest Lane Park. The garbage cleanup of the park is a step in the right direction, but the encampment remains there as well as under the 380 freeway at Huntington Avenue, at 380 and Cherry Avenue with campers and cars and other sites in San Bruno. The issue of this homeless living in Forest Lane Park has been going on for the last 30 years and neighbors have been upset about it for just as long. Now, however, the situation has changed from just a homeless problem to a COVID-19 health and safety issue for neighborhood residents. Human waste is accumulating in the park. The encampment residents freely walk throughout our neighborhood without masks. The folks living in these encampments have refused services that the county has offered through life moves, preferring instead to inhabit public spaces. In the case of Forest Lane Park, it's provided by the city for enjoyment of children and families to recreate, exercise, and enjoy a small outdoor space. Neighborhood parents understandably refuse to take their children to this deplorable, stench-filled park. It's no longer a neighborhood play space. It's a location for drugs, drinking, and disgusting behavior towards neighborhood residents. Imagine bringing your own children to Forest Lane Park for a play date. The city, county, and CDC have asked residents to put up and shut up during the pandemic due to the concern for health and safety of police officers and workers of Caltrans and other agencies trying to provide support services. It's been suggested that portable toilets and wash stations at Forest Lane Park be provided to help keep the park cleaner. I believe this solution will only encourage stubborn individuals to hang on even longer. We've been asked to be compassionate towards the less fortunate. However, the homeless individuals feel a sense of entitlement to take over the park, as well as other public spaces they've inhabited. How long should the community have to put up with this? 
I implore our elected representatives and appointed officials to act on behalf of the residents of Forest Lane Park neighborhood and all San Bruno residents and continue working to truly rid the city of San Bruno of homeless encampments and to set up a plan and a timeline for safe removal of all encampments in San Bruno. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gage. Gregory, next please. Next is Nicola Alvarez, Nicola Bosco Alvarez, just one moment. And hey, Nicola, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, whenever you're ready. Okay, hi. So um, thank you again for letting me speak. Um, I did speak last week as well, um, or at the previous meeting. And I am a resident um, of San Bruno. I live on Hensley Avenue. And I do appreciate all of the help and the efforts of the city and the police, um, again, to help try to um, correct the problem of the encampment here. Um, I, I do understand that there was a, an, an attempt to clean up. Um, I, think, I think it was maybe a Wednesday couple of weeks ago and it didn't really make much of a difference I will be honest um, it is at the end of the block where I live and so um, I have this has become a thoroughfare for not only people riding bikes unmasked as the woman before me said people come through here unmasked um, but also there's cars that go speeding through here that are going to the encampment. Um, I see a lot of cars that sit at the end of the block there at Huntington Park and there's people gathered, unmasked. Um, and recently I found on Euclid Avenue, um, a large black garbage bag filled with plastic bottles filled with urine. And um, there's also a concern not only about the human waste, um, but also just the lack of respect for for the people that live in this neighborhood. So I have had things dumped in front of my house, liquids of whatever kind, and also things put into my garbage, which I don't necessarily think are my neighbors. Um, but there are things that are put into my garbage cans that I did not put there. Um, and just speeding and a lot of um, a, a lot of activity um, that is that is questionable. So I appreciate the efforts of the city, but I think that this problem is, you know, pretty large. And I think that the residents here have voiced so much concern, not only about health and safety, but also about how can we. I understand they have they have rejected services, some of them, but it is. Um, it's certainly a concern um, for how all of us here as residents live on a daily basis. So thank you. I appreciate you giving me the time. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Alvarez. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody else in the queue. 